Friends, we have the author of Real Estate Gift. Jim Wooten has become a good friend of myself, Cammie Baker, and The Rock, The Real Agents of Change. And today we're going to have a case study and hear what he's doing out in the world to help these property owners and nonprofits. I believe today we're talking about a shopping center. Jim, tell us the story. Great. Thanks, Cammie. Thanks for all the work you do. So, yes, uh, a few years ago, I had a, a church client um, that wanted to move out to the suburbs, get a much bigger building. They were close to the down central business district and had no extra par enough parking. And um, they were going to be able to sell their property for like a million and a half. And um, they wanted something much bigger. And so... Um, through a series of negotiations, we came across a shopping center that was uh, for sale at $8 million. And um, so we made a proposal that a, a bargain sale, that's what we're talking about here today is how to do a bargain sale, uh, which is a partial gift of real estate. Meaning that uh, if the price is $1 million and you can buy it for 800,000 instead of a million and the other 200,000 is a gift, that's a bargain sale. That's what IRS calls it, a bargain sale. So um, we negotiated uh, and came up with a value of $8 million uh, that needed to be uh, you know, certified by an appraisal, of course. But they would, the church was willing to pay $5.7 million. Now, it's a shopping center. And it had a classic big box retailer uh, grocery store that was vacant in this shopping center. So the story you see all across America that you have a shopping center, but the anchor tenant uh, is is uh, is left and it's, the space is dark. So um, we still had about 12 tenants in the building, the small tenants, the restaurant, the barbershop, the veterinarian and the chiropractor and all the other small tenants you have all over America with a shopping center. So uh, they were contributing a lot of rent money every month. And we were able to um, get the seller to agree to a $2.3 million gift. And um, in other words, the church would pay $5.7 million and the $2.3 million differential would be a charitable deduction for the seller. Now, the, the seller had built the center years before, many years before. He's a developer and uh, still owned the shopping center and wanted to sell it. And uh, he said to me, Jim, uh, $2.3 million gift. Uh, I mean, if I made the gift, I, mean, I can't write off $2.3 million. I don't have $2.3 million of income. And uh, well, one of the rules in a bargain sale uh, tax law is that you can carry forward the loss if you don't use it all. In one year, you can carry it forward for five more years. That's a total of six years. So two point three million, you know, six years. It's almost four hundred thousand a year. And I told him that. I said, "Oh, you don't need to write it off the first year. You can write it off over six years." He said, "That's almost four hundred thousand dollars a year." He says, "I, I don't, I don't, I couldn't write off that much, but I like what you're doing, and uh, I want help. I'm going to do this." So. We got it done, but since I'm on that part of the discussion, I want to say that actually you can only write off 30% of your current year's income. That is line 22 of your Form 1040. So if you're taking notes, that's worth writing down. 30% of your adjusted gross income is all you can write off in one year and you can carry it forward. So anyway, uh, we went to a bank that we thought would make the $5.7 million loan 100% because we had this huge gift. And um, banks, even if you have a, a good gift, like more than they might normally make a 75% loan, but they they don't like to make a 75% loan if the, the buyer has nothing at all at risk. Even if it's, a, you know, with a 25% gift, they still say, hey, we'd like somebody to have some skin in the game here. So they may say, how about you put up 10%, um, you know, at least, and uh, we'll make you a 65% loan instead of 75% loan. Well, we couldn't get this done until finally we were able to find a bank that said, well, look, 
you're going to spend a million and a half from the sale of this, not for the down payment, but you're going to put it into the interior of this grocery store space and make it into a church. It takes quite a bit of remodeling to do this. Uh, we had four big columns in the middle of this grocery store. Like every grocery store, there's columns, pillars. Had to remove those, had to put a great big I-beam across the top to make it all work and turn it into a fabulous big sanctuary. And uh, um, so anyway, we got a bank to say, well, if you're going to put a million and a half dollars into the interior, we're going to count that as improving the collateral enough that we're going to do this. So they did. They made the $5.7 million loan for the purchase price. And they've never paid a penny on that mortgage because they got ten, all these 12 tenants producing the income. And they retain the same management company. They don't manage it. They don't, you know, answer calls from tenants or anything. They, they do pay a fee, like 5% or so every month uh, for this service, but it's well worth it. And, and they just, that pays their mortgage. So basically, they got a 55,000 square foot uh, Big Bear space uh for free so for free. based based on the numbers you're talking about this gentleman who did the donation as you said for six years it was carried over at about four hundred thousand a year so based on the 30 percent of income he would be needing to earn be earning about 1.2 million to yeah. be able to write off the four hundred thousand a year is that work right. If he's going to be able to use the whole 400, yes, you are right. And he didn't have a million to in net income, but he did it anyway because he had charitable intent. And by the way, we need to say that also, that in order to get the deduction, you have to have charitable intent. IRS demands it. In fact, they want to see it in writing. It has to be in writing. A good place to put that is right in the purchase contract. If we're talking to realtors out here, uh, or you're the church, you're the charity, uh, you need to have that in the purchase contract. They can do it with a letter just so it's done before the closing. Uh, you know, that the taxpayer hereby declares his donative intent to make a charitable gift of the amount by which the appraised value uh, is in excess of the net purchase price. That's kind of what you have to say, what I just said there. And you, um, you do such creative stuff. And I know that our viewers are thinking, how did you get this seller of the property to give that much of a donation, especially if it wasn't even the church that he's emotionally attached to? How right. did that come about? Well, let me just say um, they do it. <laughs> um, it's not like I have great persuasive abilities. Uh, I might have, but is not necessary in order to get this done. Uh, you prepare the offer and uh, deliver to the listing agent. And what's going to happen is the seller's going to look at this and he's going to say, wow, I've never seen this before. Um, tax deduction. I better let my CPA look at it. So he takes it to his CPA. His CPA in every case, uh, if there's any income to deduct this against, they're going to tell them, yeah, you can do this. It's right in the IRS code, and it's done all the time by people that are philanthropically minded, and you should do it. That's what happens in all my cases. Um, speaking so of that, speaking of giving that uh, that offer to the listing agent, does the listing agent get paid on the full eight million dollar value or no, the five point no. seven cash that they're getting? Very, very good question, and that comes up almost every time and the answer is only the net purchase price so um i mean there's no reason the seller couldn't pay him on that but they don't want to they they say hey if i'm making a gift here uh, then i'm just paying the commission on the net purchase price so it's 5.7 and uh it does it does get asked all, all the time the seller but it doesn't create a stumbling block and it doesn't keep the deal from happening it's just a question they raise they, the, the the listing agent will say to me as you know the, as the agent representative buyer hey does this mean i'm going to get uh, my full commission and i say no you're going to get a commission based on the net purchase price and that's all so just get this done and uh, and he can share in the blessing that comes from being in the philanthropic world and well, I'll tell you what, 
if they learn how to do this, it's going to mean a lot of transactions for them in the future. Well, uh, that's one participating of the, in. Exactly. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why you and I are so excited to work together is that, you know, we know that 87% of the marketplace, the consumers and clients are more likely to choose the realtor that is philanthropic, that is doing something in the community. So right. that agent would be smart to understand mm -hmm. they're going to take a little bit of a cut on their commission, but boy, the PR possibilities to be able yeah. to talk about what happened there is, is extraordinary. It is. Yeah. And so that's, you know, he, he gets the halo effect of this too. I say he or she gets the halo effect of doing this and they'll be bragging about it at their next party about how they did it. So um, it's fantastic business um, and it's very rewarding, satisfying. You're helping a lot of people make the world a better place. And um, We appreciate you, Jim, for coming on and, and having an interview with us today. Great story. And uh, we look forward to the next case study that we do with the legend himself, Jim Wooten. See, see you next time, everybody.